Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. At some point or another, you've probably run into an instance where when the record is added to a table, you wanted certain fields to default. In the past, how you've had to do that is you've had to write up those requirements and send those over to a developer. They go into Visual Studio, uh, develop those requirements, and then push that back in the environment for testing. What we're going to do today is I'm going to show you a way that you can use Microsoft Flow and the alerts to actually update a record after it's been created with some default values. Okay, so a few weeks ago, I created a video it was, it was using alerts or in Dynamics 365 to trigger flows. And then also a few weeks ago, I created an article that um, where I showed you how to use virtual entities in uh, Common Data Service. Now, if you're familiar a little bit with the Common Data Service, you're probably familiar with Dual Write, and Dual Write. Dynamics 365 writes the data actually to the database, right? So you actually get the physical data inside the, the common data service. The advantage of virtual entities is you can get to the entities through the common data service, but the data is not actually there. You, you just basically saves the, the data right, right? So you can just, you can reference the virtual entities through the common data service, but you don't actually have to have the data in the common data service, okay? So with those two pieces of information, I thought about, well, what if we triggered uh, an alert when, the, when an item was added, for example, which triggered a flow that went, then went back into Dynamics 365 and updated some fields, you know, some default fields that we wanted. So I thought, you know, we'd give that a try and see how that worked out. So the requirements we're going to look at today for a customer is when a product is added, so a release product is added, there's three things that we want to set. So the first one is we want to set up the coverage group for uh, master planning. We're going to set up the coverage group to group one. And then the other two, we're going to put some criteria in there. So that, that group one coverage group, we're going to do that on all items. The second requirement we're going to have is if the storage dimension is where, W-A-R-E, which is advanced warehouse, what we're going to do is we're going to set a filter code. Okay. And then the third criteria that we're going to, third requirement that we're going to look at is when the storage dimension is where, W-A-R-E, which again is advanced warehouse, and the sales unit is EA each, we want to set the um, unit sequence group to EA each. Okay, so we've got those three requirements we're going to try and fulfill today with this flow, Power Automate flow. All right, so let's hop over to flow and then let's take a look. I've got this written and, and we'll, we'll take a look at how this is written. So the first thing here is I'm looking for, this is a finance and operations uh, connect action item. So when an item is created, I'm looking in my environment, uh, the category is gonna be an alert, and uh, business event is when an alert rule is triggered, and this legal entity, I'm using the USMF legal entity, okay? So what that's gonna do is whenever that alert in Dynamics 365 finance and operations fires, it's going to come in and trigger this flow to, to execute. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is once that tr tr is triggered, we want to parse the information that's contained within that that alert. So what I've done is I've I've parsed the JSON, the body of that through JSON, um, and, and it's just going to parse the different field events out there. Okay. So from there. I'm gonna go and I wanna get that single record, right? So I wanna find that record ID. So I'm gonna go into list records and I'm gonna specify my entity name. Now we'll note that this is a common data service list record. You can, there's one for Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, but I'm doing this all through the common data service. So this is the common data service one here, all right? So the entity name is the release products, MSERP, which is anything that's a virtual entity has that MSERP kind of uh, suffix at the end of it, all right? And then the filter query, I'm looking where this item number equals the key value one, and the key value one is coming from the where I'm parsing the JSON, which it comes from the, where the item was created, and where the data area, which the data area is gonna be the company, is equal this data area ID, which is just, in, I know from the, the JSON, that's just gonna be the company, okay? Now, once I get that record, so it's a list of records, but with that filter criteria, I should only really ever get one record right because you can only have one release product of that item number in the system, right, for that company, right? So I should only get one record. 
Now I'm declaring a few variables here. I'm, I'm doing a couple of different things with these variables. So if you remember the unit sequence group and code one, I'm setting, there's criteria that I'm going to be using for these two. So basically all I'm doing is I'm declaring these variables. I'm not setting a value. So I'm declaring a variable called unit sequence group. It's a string, but I'm not putting a value there. Same thing for this code one. It's a string, but I'm not setting a value. Because remember we have some criteria. It needs to be a where, a storage dimension uh, for code one. And then it also needs to have the sales unit of EA before we set the unit sequence group, right? So we're gonna declare those two variables. And this third variable, which is a coverage group, I'm going ahead and setting the value of that. So I'm setting a coverage group, creating a coverage group variable, setting it its type string and setting it to a value of period one. Because that's gonna be the value regardless of any other criteria. Whenever I add an item, I want it to be value period one, okay? So then we get down in this update release product section here and this is for each like so this gets created automatically because this is a list of records this is going to return an array and this is going to um, iterate through the array so whenever i add uh, this if statements these switch statements whatever it's going to kind of create this box automatically remember we're only going to get one record but it still has to do this as it's processing an array type so what we're going to do here is we're going to kind of expand this one out now this is an if so what we're looking here is if the storage dimension group is where. So remember, if, if storage dimension group is where, we're going to do two things. We want to look at the unit sequence group, and we're also going to set the code one variable, right? So if it's not where, we don't really have any criteria. We're not going to do anything. I'm just throwing it away if it's not where, okay? So if it is where, so the first thing what we're going to do is we're going to set code variable to C1. We're going to make it value a value of C1. Now the unit sequence group, if you remember, we have another set of criteria we need to look at. We need to look at is if it's an EA, if the sales unit is EA. Now the way I've done that is I've added a switch here. And I'll explain here in just a minute why I added a switch and uh, it'll make more sense to you. So what I'm doing is I'm looking at sales unit and I'm going to, where it's EA, it equals EA, I'm going to set the unit sequence group variable to EA. Now, the reason why I'm doing a switch here is I can add multiple cases. Now, in this case, I've only got one case, which is EA. But with a switch, you can add many different criteria. So, you know, if it's EA, if the sales unit is EA, uh, the unit sequence group is EA. If the sales unit is PCS, you might set it to something else. If it's BX, you might set it to something else. So the switch statement here just gives me a lot of flexibility as far as just adding extra options without actually messing with any of my other code. I can just come in here and add extra cases to my switch statement without messing with any of my other code and, and set that variable to however I want it, okay? So the default on the case, I'm not doing anything, just leaving it, leaving it blank, all right? So if it doesn't, uh, equal EA, it's just going to basically leave it as a blank. It's not going to set it to any value. All right. So now at this point, I've got all three variables set. So I've got my code variable set. I've got my unit sequence group variable set. And I've got my coverage group variable set. Okay. So now we're ready to update the record. So I'm still within uh, this update release product uh, section here. Let me shrink that down here. So it's going to go through this switch, this if, to tell if it's aware um, storage dimension or not, and go through the if. Um, and then what we want to do is we're going to update the record. So what we're going to do here is on the record, we need to specify the entity that we're going to be updating, which is this release products v2. Again, it's MSERP standing for virtual. And on these virtual entities, there's, there's always an ID that you use. And let me, let me just kind of show you how I, how I find those IDs there for the virtual entities. So if I go into my data, and let's go to entities, and I'm gonna change this to all so I can see all my entities, and then I'm just gonna type in MSERP, because remember that's my, my virtual entities. And so we go to release products, let's go ahead and go into that one. And what you can do, this is going to be a list of all the data fields, but what I like to do here is I like to go and just sort this Z to A. So that's going to get rid of all the, op get the optional sorted at the bottom. So it'll give me the required fields and the recommended fields here. So if you look in the recommended or the required fields, there's always this one of these fields 
is going to be the unique identifier. And you can tell right here, here's the, the data type, unique identifier. And typically it's the same name as the entity I found. Uh, I don't want to say that universally because I haven't looked at it, every entity, but it typically looks like it's going to be the, the same name as the entity, right? So, but you can come here just to verify it. And this is the number, what you want to do, you want to reference this value whenever you're doing an update, okay? So this is going to give it the exact number, all right? So let's flip back over, and that's what I've done here. And this release product update is, is I'm getting that from, again, from my where I've, I've done this list records in it here. It's going to give me that uh, release products ID, right? So under list records, I've searched for that release products and, and added it here. So if we expand this advanced options out, these are all the different fields that we can, we, we can update. So you can, as you can see, there's a lot of different fields on the release product that we can update. So let me scroll to the top. And what, what you wanna do is basically find the fields you wanna update. So here's the first one, here's the coverage group. So remember here, I've just put my coverage group variable here. And so if I just, I wanna make sure that I use my variables from the variable section. So it's, I've chosen this one, the coverage group. And if I scroll down, here's my code one. Now this is kind of, this is kind of tricky because as, as you know in the release products you've got code one two three and four but here in the entity they're all just named filter code so what I did was I put code one here ran it gave me an error code two here ran it because the filter codes are defined values so I, I kept running it until I found the one that was actually code one so I would just put this down in each field and I finally found the one that was code one and and put that in there right there okay. And then the last one, if we scroll down, is the unit sequence group. So unit sequence group ID. So again, I'm just using the variable for my unit sequence group. Okay, so let's save this. And I'll scroll back up to the top. So now what should happen, as long as this is an active, let me just minimize that. As long as this is an active, whenever we add a new record to Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, those fields are gonna be defaulted. So let's go ahead and go over to Finance and Operations. We're going to go to New Release Products. So we're going to go to Product Information Management. And then we're going to go to Release Products. And then let's just add a new item. So we're going to do uh, Z012. We're going to put Test Item 2. And let's just set our model, model group. I'll do FIFO, our item group will do audio. And so our storage dimension group, remember we're gonna do where because we wanna make sure that it's gonna set our, our warehouse fields and tracking dimension groups, we're gonna do none. Make sure our sales unit is EA, so it sets our um, unit sequence group correctly and everything else should be fine. Let's go ahead and hit okay to add that. All right, so if we go and look here, right now we don't have a coverage group on here and we don't have a unit sequence group or a filter code, right? So this is when it's first added. So depending on how often you have the alert batch running, it may take it a minute or two to update these, but let's go back over to the our flow and we can back out of this and let's go and take a look and see our run here. So this was an hour ago. Let's just kind of refresh here. So this will take just a minute to run. I think I got these set up to run every minute or two. So I'll, I'll pause the video here for just a second and come back when this is run. All right, so we're back. So we take a look at this. This is finished running and it, it successfully ran. So let's flip back over to uh, Dynamics and Operations or Finance and Operations. <laughs> And so what we'll do, we'll go ahead, so if just as a reminder, before we refresh this record, we've got no coverage group set, we've got no se unit sequence group set, and we've got no code one set, all right? So let's go ahead and refresh this record. And if we take a look, we have our coverage group set, we have our unit sequence group set, and then we have our code one set, okay? So as you can see, it's pretty easy to create a flow that will update any records. We use the release product here, maybe use the customer record in defaults and fields, but it's fairly simple to, to, to do this. Now, I think that this would be mainly used for master records. I can't really see you doing this if you're, you know, for example, you're defaulting some sales order header default you know, fields, because generally when you create the sales order, you're gonna go in immediately and start adding lines. So if you've got a, a a field on the header that you need to set that maybe copies down to the lines. You really wouldn't want to do this because it, the flow wouldn't have enough time to run. But anything that's like a master record, a customer, inventory item, vendor, should be able to use this to default some fields without any code. We didn't write any code to do this. We did it all through flow. Okay. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found some value in that. I, I think that's a pretty neat neat feature. If you did, you know, give it a like, thumbs up. That just helps with me on the distribution of the video. And also, if you like this content, I put out one of these videos about once a week. So uh, go and feel free to subscribe to the channel. That way you get notified when I, when I pop out a new video there. Okay? So again, I hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, thanks for watching. See you later.